OpenAI just launched their first social network. Not a tool, not a feature, but a straight up social network. And the psychology behind it, well, it's actually brilliant. So let's cut through the PR spin and what's really going on here. AI images, AI slop as it's called, has got a bad reputation. Most social media platforms are full of this. We don't know what's real. We don't know what's not real. AI boyfriends, AI girlfriends, AI partners are doing damage to young people. So here's the danger that these AI platforms are facing, that the AI generated content in terms of videos and images and sounds are getting really bad associations. People are associating this negativity, this mess, this, this slop with the AI companies. And OpenAI, for one, absolutely doesn't want this. So they're launching what they hope is a solution to this problem, plus some other monetization business strategies which will be coming down the pipeline. Their idea is that Sora 2 runs very differently to other social platforms. Rather than the intermittent addictive reward systems, the FOMO, the enragement, the engagement, the attention, they're betting on a different strategy a friend to friend strategy, almost quaint in terms of social media. So the idea behind Sora 2 is that you uh, make videos and you make videos embedding yourself. So there's a function in there, it's called Cameo. So you can make videos of yourself. You can allow other people to do this. So your identity is built into the app, uh, the mobile app at the moment. And the idea is you can play around and share videos you've made with other people. You can send them to your friends. And so it's more of this oxytocin, this more friendship connection based, or at least they're hoping it will be, rather than the addictive dopamine systems. And it's only been about 24 hours or so since this app launched, but I've had a play with it. And I noticed something really interesting. As you scroll through other people's videos, every so often the app asks you, how are you feeling? How's your mood been after using this app? And you can say good or bad, and you can actually curate that content or say, I want it to be uplifting. I want it to be this. So they're actively checking in with how the app and the content is making people feel, which is really interesting. I've never seen anything like that on a social platform before. So they want to tune the content to keep you in a positive mood. Why? Because they want the positive association with AI output, with AI images and AI video. It's part of their branding. Like Branding 101, you associate your brand with feelings, with things over and over again, until the emotional response to those things attaches to that brand, in this case, OpenAI or ChatGPT. They want to ensure that your mood is maintained in a positive way. So it's a really interesting different twist on social media, one we haven't seen before. And it's gonna be fascinating to see if this actually takes off. Of course, the other reason they're doing this is the company's getting more and more in debt and their income, their revenue is not keeping up with what they hoped it would be. So this feature is gonna be the perfect avenue to start bringing in some advertising revenue. And I think we'll see this by the end of the year or early next year, 2026, we'll see some forms of advertising creeping into this social uh, Sora 2 platform. So you've had a chance to play with this Sora 2 platform. Tell me what you think. Do you enjoy seeing content that is 100% AI generated? And this is really gonna be the big question because social media so far, a lot of it has relied on seeing things that were amazing or, you know, I can't believe that really happened. And we knew that if we saw the video, it meant that that had happened out in the real world. Now on any platform, that's no longer the case. And particularly on Sora 2, that's absolutely definitely not the case. So I'm really curious from you guys, if you had a chance to play with it, if you haven't, do you think you're gonna be engaged by 100% synthetic content, even if it looks real? If you've had a chance to play with it, tell me, were you engaged? Or was it more like some people react to video games because it's all synthetic, it's not real, they don't get engaged as much. And it's a really interesting thing as we see video and photographs and audio moving from documenting reality into something very different, something creative, more like drawing and painting or poems, right? It's a creative expression of things. It's still entertaining, it can still be funny, it can still be moving, heart-wrenchingly moving, but it's just not a documentation of what happened in reality. So have a play as you're watching this video, you may or may not be able to download Sora 2. 
Sora 2 is only available, I think, still in the US and Canada, but it will be shortly rolling out to other countries. Um, I've had a play with a cameo feature trying to generate videos of me. So far, it hasn't been that impressive. It's we've done weird things to my accent. One video, it gave me a weird kind of Austrian accent. Another video, it contorted my face. It didn't look like me. Uh, it changed my body a bit. It's done some weird things. And so um, the amount of training it gets from you is really only a few seconds of training. You just uh, read out a few numbers on the screen of your phone as you hold it out at arm's length. Uh, and that seems to be, uh, they think it's enough to train the, the model on. But I don't know if it really is. The stuff I'm seeing from the people in OpenAI is some amazing content, some amazingly realistic looking videos. The stuff I've been managed to do so far hasn't looked anywhere near that good. So time will tell. Maybe this algorithm is uh, learning as it goes. We'll see. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on this new social platform, um, an AI 100% synthetic social platform of videos. Tell me what you think. Are you enjoying it or not and why?